Tito and Chuck, you know, this date, this, this date and fight are getting closer to closer, and I want to be less and less of a dick about this. I really do. I don't want to treat this fight as as some kind of a joke. I I, I just don't want to do that. But boy, I got to force myself sometimes not to. It's a tough one. The whole card is tough. They finally announced the card. I read it. I haven't the foggiest idea who's fighting that night. And I know Gleason DeBow is on there, and I know Kendall Grove is on there, and I will fully admit to you that it's a whole bunch of studs. whole bunch of studs that have worked hard and sacrificed and are getting their opportunity. I wish them nothing but the best. I'm just coming to you from a perspective that when we have a new show, this card has been surprising. And when I tell you I don't know who's on the card, I don't mean that from a condescending standpoint to say that anything is less with those guys' skills than the people whose names I would recognize. The reason I point that out for you is there's not a lot of notable names that are free agents right now. And the notable names who are free agents that we had rumored that were going to be picked up or signed by Golden Bay and put on this card just ended up not happening. So as I say, I don't know who's on this card. I do want to clarify that. I know enough to know there are a bunch of really hardworking, really talented people that got an opportunity and they're going to go out there and take it. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. To share with you that I, from a business standpoint, am very skeptical about where this is going to go or how serious Oscar even is in this space, there's some red flags there. Um, boy, I mean, I, I called this out. I was getting ready to fight Fedor. I called this out with the media, and I said, look, I, literally, this was me. I won't get credit for it. I'll give myself credit for it right now. I told Mark Riamonde, if Oscar De La Hoya does not come out with a press release stating who is on this card within the next six days. I guarantee you that card is not going to happen. Four days later, he put out his card. But, I mean, it, it's been the same way. I, I feel as though I've been the driving force of this card. I'm the one that told you guys, hey, this is never going to happen. Oscar doesn't have a date, a venue, tickets on sale, a promoter's license. And then all of a sudden, he's, he started answering for some of those things. So... I guess I appreciate the fact that Oscar or his PR team or somebody listens to this show, but there are still some big red flags going on with this. And we'll see, you know, we're starting to see these guys getting licensed. We're starting to see that the pay-per-view providers are there. We're starting to see that Chuck and Tito, you know, are getting a little bit more serious. We're starting to see some posters come out. I mean, I guess my overall opinion to you guys, if I had to pick right now, I would say, yes, it's going to happen. I would also share with you guys, there is not going to be a Golden Boy MMA Part 2. It has been a confusing, we'll call it that, it's been a confusing promotion and a confusing proposition from the very beginning. And it's not, it's not really getting any clearer. And uh, Randy had come out, Randy Couture came out, and he's got a pretty good relationship with both Chuck and Tito. I suppose that's easy to do when you kick both those guys' asses. They're, they're probably both pretty nice to him. But he's got a good relationship with both of them. And I, but I think he's working with Chuck. I mean, he might even be cornering Chuck. I know he's been in the training facility over at Unbreakable with Jay Glazer. I, I know he's with Chuck a lot. But he came out and said, you know, I do have one concern about the fight, which is only that Chuck has not fought in eight years. And I don't just mean you guys can go and look at his record and see he hasn't been in the ring in eight years. You know, Randy went a little bit further to say, you know, even in the practice room. You know, when Chuck left the sport of MMA, he he largely left because he was taking big shots. I'm reminding you guys of that. These aren't Randy's words. But he was largely taking big shots and he was having a hard time dealing with those shots. So when you retire like that, you you don't go in and spar. That's the whole reason you left the sport in the first place. You don't want to take any more shots. Well, that's exactly what Chuck did, but then the, you know, the weeks turned into months, turned into years, and now we're the well better part of a decade, and he hasn't even done any sparring until just recently, when according to his own admittance, he, he needed some money and decided to jump in there one more time with Tito. So I think that was a fair comment by Randy. Randy also elaborated by saying, you know, Chuck's fighting style was really time-based. You know, he, he was a fantastic with timing. Guys would be coming in, boom, he would explode and catch him. Making the shot doubly as hard, right? You guys remember the Kevin Randleman fight with, with Chuck? Kevin's coming this way, Chuck's coming this way. You, got, you have a car wreck. And Chuck was really good at that. He was really good at some of those timing issues. And I agree with that with Randy. I never thought of Chuck's career like that until Randy pointed it out. But that is something that you lose with age. So as you start to break down the fight, I have the foggiest idea who's going to win between those guys. 
And I will tell you, that's not a fight that any of us are going to study or break down for technique and new and what's coming up in MMA. I, I get it for what it is. It's a walkout between a guy with a mohawk and a guy with bleached hair that means something from our past. I get the whole thing. But that doesn't still mean that there isn't something special there. On some level, a reminiscence, if you will. Uh, an all mater match, if you will, right? Where the, the, the guys return to school for a funder. It doesn't still mean there's not something there. And I, and I want to be positive about it. But I think the best that I could tell you right now is that I will sing a little bit of a different tune that I at least think that the card is going to happen. But I'm not guaranteeing you that much. Let's stick around. As the weeks get closer, we will have to accept it either is or isn't. But there are still some things going on that are very suspicious about this alleged fight. 